coming up on the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City after show. Everybody, we are on that was fucking crazy. A lot of these bitches were like, "Well, we're not going to see Jen. She's in jail." Surprise, bitch! No, I'm not. I'm right here. Now you have to face the shit you said. Excuse me, Jen. Jen, I did not talk about you. That's a load of bullshit. Mary, I sat next to your ass, okay? I heard everything that you said. Jenny needs to go sit down and shut up. Take that energy and tell your husband you don't want a sister wife. If you're her friend, be her freaking friend or don't. Stop oh making it about ourselves. Stop playing it. She needs friends who can support her. I was probably a better friend for saying I can't be your friend. I felt there was two sides to Meredith. Sit on the pot and shut up, don't get off the pot. The rumors are that Mary and Robert are predators. What? It started to make me feel a little uneasy, like, wait, what? The allegations against Mary are so big, she could be in trouble, we don't know. I just felt like I was in over my head and Lisa brought me here, so I'm gonna drag her down with me. Your Real Housewives of Salt Lake City after show starts now. The luncheon goes a little left as the conversation turns to who said what about Jen and Vale, while Jen is at the table. In what world is that normal? Jen, everybody was talking. Everybody it was, was talking. Big, it, was okay. big hey, it was big no, news. No, 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 no. It was the no, big thing about table dinner. Was it was everybody thing. was talking about it. Yes. In what world are you getting awarded for the worst thing? Who said the worst thing? Oh, I can only think of Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. Like, never witnessed anything like that before. Everybody was talking about it. We're all Jen, if I, I were, everyone, if that happened to me, we'd everyone, all be talking about it. Including myself, we're talking was about it. But yeah. what do you, I mean, I don't know why we have to tell her this to hurt her. No, it's not it. to hurt her. It's honestly, I didn't it's talk about that's it. what friends I do. No, 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 honest about it. What I really feel like is a lot of these bitches were like, oh, well, we're not going to see Jen. She's in jail. Surprise, bitch. No, I'm not. I'm right here. Hello. And so now you have to face the shit you said and try to spin it in a positive way because, you know, you all are holier than thou and don't make any mistakes or whatever. And so now it's like when we all got there together for the first time, I felt like it was I, I was sitting there looking at all of them and listening to all of them accuse and yell and attack each other about who said what about me and what was worse. I think that was so mean. I thought that was like so bizarre. Clearly, I forgot what I said because I didn't even think I said anything. Excuse me, Jen. Jen, I did not talk about you. <laughs> I'm like, I didn't say anything about you, Jen. They were talking. And I said like probably the worst. So I was like, oh Lord. I never saw nothing good in her, never. And I was scared of her because I knew what she was capable of. So I was like, oh wow, I did say some things. But um, I don't think she needed to know that. I think that was to hurt Jen. Clearly you have to know going in, coming from any angle and telling Jen what people were saying about her when she's getting indicted and getting arrested is clearly going to hurt Jen. So you don't care that you're hurting her. And I just thought that was ridiculous. I really did. First of all, I'm glad I wasn't having to like fight with everybody about it, but it was, it was a hard pill to swallow to sit there and go, oh, wow, you said that? Oh, damn. Oh, you thought that about me. Oh, okay. Oh, you think I'm the Mexican mafia, uh, Mexican gangster? When I think about Jim, I see a heartless, I see a thug. Like, you know, those Mexican people that, that make all those drugs. Thank you for giving me one. <laughs> it was so, like, explosive at that time and so many people talking. I didn't really understand what the hell they were talking about other than, listen, y'all are talking about me. And I have this much patience left to sit here and like, it, this is crazy. If there's a time to rally and just women supporting women, hashtag it up. We are not evidence of that right now. Nope. You know, this is what's wrong with the world right here, right now. That was crazy. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> Heather, after everything that happened in Vail, None of us are saying what we think or feel right now because we're scared of Mary. You sit next to Mary at Jenny's luncheon, but luckily the International Peace Garden worked and you two made up quickly. I do. I just want to be at peace, man. And I just want to... There's so much crap, you know? I like you. I like Heather. Thank you. The Peace Garden works. <laughs> Why did you think it was important for you guys to try to make peace? Uh, Because I'm not an idiot. And... 
you, the last thing you want to do is have Mary Cosby coming after you. And I'd also seen how she'd been treating my cousin who had been her biggest supporter and most authentic friend. You can go, little girl. So I was just like, you want to make up? Yeah, I want to make up too. Let's be best friends. Here we go. Done. I think Heather and I do that. I think Heather um, will try to muster something up about me to get angry at me. I am done with women being unkind to me and doing little sh shady digs. And I'll retaliate. Okay, then you have a good day. Because I don't hold back. I'm going to say how I feel in that moment. But I don't know. There's something about Heather I like. I'm sorry, it's, it's just something, I mean, she's likable, she's relatable, and and then there's a side of her that I see that she's down on herself. You're gonna see me look like a flapper with cankles. It makes me wanna, like, lift her, tell her, you know, let her know her worth, like, Heather, stop, because I don't see what she sees. But then there's a part of me that's like, why are you picking on me? What did I do to you? And so, you know, and, and when we come together, her and I just, apologize easy I'm just like okay sorry she's like okay sorry and then and I don't really at that point I don't care why she's picking on me or I don't care why she's mad at me I'm I don't want to be in that moment I don't want to be in that space and I I move on and she moves on right with me well she's let's like, do you want to toast to that like a, yeah you have like a, a drip <laughs> left <laughs> well, listen I saved it for this very purpose that's kind of our thing it's weird but it is <laughs> If someone wants to be at peace with me, I want to be at peace with them. I have enough problems just navigating life as a single mom with a business. You know, it's it's enough. So like, if they want to cause problems with me, I'm going to still try to be at peace with them. The question is, why didn't she offer the same peace to me? Because I was like, wow, Heather, like really, like at least like make her work for it. With Mary, it's just another level because I truly was her friend and such a good friend to her. That I'm not, I have a boundary there and a wall there that I will no longer allow her to walk all over me. Well, that's an interesting point. What is it about you that makes Mary not extend the same grace? I think that I probably provoke some insecurity in her. I think what Whitney says is true. Like, you know, just Whitney's threatening in her, just her presence that probably in a way that I'm not. But I think also that Mary was privy to the fact that Whitney, uh, was catching wind of a lot of the rumors and stuff. And she wanted to immediately start to distance herself because she knew that Whitney was getting brought up to speed on all of the horrible, horrible allegations about her church. The congregation believes that Mary is God. And I think there's probably a bird in her ear, you know, saying that Whitney knows what time it is. What's the best defense? A quick offense, yep. right? You know? Yeah. As you ladies sit down to lunch, Jen opens up to you about her arrest for the first time. You know, I had no idea anything like this would happen. Sweetheart, I can tell you about your outfit. You didn't go to jail. I loved your outfit, by the way. <laughs> well, I thought I was yeah. going to jail, not jail. So when you're hearing her explain her side of the story, what are you thinking? Um, Chris? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was thinking what to believe and what not to believe. Jen, this is a true story. This is this is feeling like a whole from what we got. Like, I mean, I'm just, I mean, I'm just, I'm just asking. This is a true story on my. Father. Like, you have no clue what's going on. Jen saying, I don't know, and I'm like, you have to know something, something somewhere. This is pretty powerful. What's going on here? You have to have a clue. You definitely have a clue but maybe you don't want to share it with us. No, I have no clue what's going on. Do you oh. think I'm going to show up at Beauty Lab if I know that the, they're tiny? I get that, but I mean, after the fact. No, I have no idea what's going on. Now I'm getting more hurt and even more offended because I just told you 20 times, no. So they randomly just chose your name to think that you and Stuart? I have no idea, but I don't know any of the people that they asked me about. You have no clue? I have no clue what they're talking about. And that's when I was just like, I can't, I've reached my limit, you guys. I'm not here for you guys to, to be your punching bag when you're not listening. I'm willing to talk about this no matter how difficult or hurtful the conversation will be. 
I'm willing to have that conversation, but not when it's only one sided, when you're not listening and all you want to do is go, really, Jen, like really? And I'm like, I'm not doing this. I already, t I answered this repeatedly. I'm not going to keep doing this. I already felt like I was being crucified by the world out there that I didn't, I don't know these people. Right. But then to have your inner circle question you as well, that hurts even deeper. And I was like, listen, I, I'm not here for you guys to just keep doing that. I've answered the questions and you guys don't do this with each other. Jen, everybody was talking. Everybody it was, was talking. Big, it was okay, big news. You don't go in on Mary. You don't go in on Meredith. You don't go in when, you know what I'm saying? It, it's a double standard. You don't do that. But with, with me, it's like, they know I'm going through it. They know I'm vulnerable. They know I'm hurt. And so I felt like they were just, they kept going and going. And I'm like, you know what? Let me get up and take a break. Let me go walk over to my dad's memorial, the Tongan Society's memorial, and just do what I told coach and my mom I was gonna do. If, if stuff gets heated, I'm gonna just, let me take a break. Let her talk okay. a breath. Jen, you're okay though. Come on, baby girl, you know me. You know me, come on, come on. So I go sit on the bench with Mary. Mary then starts saying again to me, so Jen, Jen, come on, do you really didn't know anything though? I, I pray to God you're guilty. You're innocent. Look, I said that. I am innocent. Okay. And I'm like, so I was just trying to gather her side because she's owed that, you know, she has a side and trying to gather, equate the multi-layered authorities with her side of not knowing anything. Um, did it make sense? No. I just accepted it and tried not to give it too much thought because it's not my business. And that's how I processed it. Given your rocky relationship with Jenny. Okay, don't right. start with me, okay? Okay. okay ooh. What were you thinking going into her pho event? Well, I remember getting dressed that day and I remember not being able to find anything to wear. My Balmain coat with the grommets. I don't know what that is. God help me. And for me, that's like a sign. Like, don't even go. When I seen the location in, in the park, and I seen the, the hat on high heels and there was like dirt and grass. I was like, Ugh. I was like mad late. I was just happy that I arrived the same time the food was being served, but I should have stayed home. I care. I don't judge. There is no more no, no, Mary. Uh, that, right? I sat no. next to you. I sat don't next to you. You said, no, this is what, what you said. said. You said, I believe she did it. And you said, well, we shouldn't talk about it. You talk about I sure it did. as much as Jen. we did. Don't lie, Mary. Don't lie. Okay. I was right okay. next Can to I talk? you. No, you can't I talk because you're lying. I'm thinking Jenny gets on my nerves. And, and Jenny's known me for three minutes. And Jenny's known Jen for two. And Jenny needs to go sit down and shut up. That's what I'm thinking. Like, what in the world is Jenny talking about? Like, go have quiet time and take that energy and tell your husband you don't want a sister wife. When Mary said what she said. Excuse me, Jen. Jen, I did not talk about you. I didn't agree with it because if you're going to say negative things about someone, own up to it because we were all there. She scammed old people and people that don't have money, that can't afford, with no remorse. We heard you. Come on, girl. Don't say, I didn't say anything mm -hmm. bad about you. I was the only one that didn't say anything. Mary, I sat next to your ass, okay? I heard everything that you said. <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't say nothing, Jen. I didn't say anything about you. I don't know why we have to tell her this to hurt her. No, no it's not to hurt her. It's honestly. Because I didn't talk about it. I sure did. I said some rough stuff. I never saw nothing good in her. Never. And I was scared of her because I knew what she was capable of. Sorry, Jen. I've been thinking about Jen lately too. I'm like, Jen probably hates my guts. <laughs> Don't come with the mindset that I'm, I'm an innocent one. No, you're not. We all say shit. we were all riled up and we said a lot of things. She doesn't know. I'm just like, Ugh. okay. It's like, Ugh. you just, you know, you could poof and that person's gone. This is like, I was praying for that magical power. Just like poof and be gone, Jenny. This is, First of all, I don't lie. And if Jenny knew anything about me, she would know that. I'm not a liar. I don't live in lie. Lies are exhausting. Like you have to, you have to remember, you know, it becomes like almost a fake personality and you have to have multiple ones because everyone's different. Then you have to change with different people and you have to remember all this. Me, I learned just live in truth. Just it's, it's, it's less.
attention, less memory, the memory is stronger, it, you know, it's and it's better to jump up and calling me a liar is unacceptable for me, unacceptable, period. And I no longer want to be around her. I didn't want to be there. You don't know me. I, don't have a I will. Mary, don't myself. leave. Mary, no, no, no. What I won't be called is a liar. You and did no talk one will tell me Jack. I don't care. You did talk about Jack. Jack. Not, no, I know Meredith. You I did want talk to go. About it was weird because when I got up, Meredith got up with me and I forgot that I was leaving. By the time I got to talk to Jen and, and me and Jen went back to the table, I completely forgot that I was mad and leaving. That's what I was like, oh, yeah, I'm supposed to be leaving. Why am I sitting back at this table? I should have left, but I, I came back. <laughs> Lisa, you and Whitney leave Vale in a bad place, but you get back together to talk when you get back to Salt Lake. You know, for me, I'm giving her yet another chance. Like, I say I hand out passes like dollar bills in Vegas. Like, we end up going paddle boarding together, and um, that crater is full of magic water. I fell in so many times, that's really hard to do, and I don't work out, as you all know. But, like, Whitney's in amazing shape, and I'm like, maybe I should start working out. Trust me, the last place I wanted to be is in a bottomless crater with Lisa, because I'm scared that I'll go to jail, because I'll drown her when she starts speaking her bull and lies but if she's saying that there's this man out there saying all of these things cameron has had extreme religious trauma being a member of, of her marriage. church and he is no longer a member of her church i just wanted to make sure that lisa's speaking facts i did not want there to be a single chance that any of the information got misinterpreted miscommunicated because i did not want this to spin out of control and the best shot I have at resolve and getting to the bottom of it is to trust that there is a small ounce in Lisa that can be honest and truthful and trustworthy. And I think that honestly, because of my whole experience with Lisa and the caters. Well, I walked into a trap no, tonight. No, Here I was thinking that Lisa no, wanted to be my friend and she's just trying to prove a point that she was not wrong. That I found Part of me learning to have any sort of relationship with Lisa is I have to be in front of her and watch her reaction. I went to Cameron just to hear more about his experience because I felt like I was starting to finally have the experience that everyone talks about with Mary. And after talking to him, I was just thinking, if Lisa knows what Cameron shared with me, then I get why Lisa doesn't want to like yeah. upset Mary either. What I heard from Cameron was pretty intense. I wanted to kind of test what Lisa, I wanted to make sure that we were being told the same thing. And if they are even one-tenth percent true, a 10% true, one tenth percent. Oh my God. Even if it, you know, a percentage of it was true, like it's a lot. And maybe that's why Lisa is like, wow, I got to say this, but I'm kind of nervous to say it. Something. He mortgaged his house and gave her 300 grand. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't being bamboozled. That's all. When Whitney starts to tell me that she has gone down the rabbit hole, Mary hurt her. You know, there's stuff that we read that's headlines, but she really got into it. She did a deep dive into Mary Cosby and her church. It's unnerving the things that she's discovered. The rumors are that Mary and Robert are predators. What? Yeah. As Mary's loyal friend, anytime there was a rumor brought up, I wouldn't even look at it. I wouldn't even open up the DM. I wouldn't read the article. I'd be like, nope, I'm not clicking on that. And after speaking to Cameron, it was the first time ever that I did dive into the rabbit hole online. It was actually Justin who was like, started just Googling it. We're like, kind of like, well, who is Mary Cosby? <laughs> like, what, what are all these people saying, you know? You know, it started to make me feel a little uneasy. Like, wait, what? Mary and Robert <laughs> used that boogeyman mentality, the fear of God as their power to get what they want. I've never done that with Mary. I've never gone down the rabbit hole. When it comes to Mary and her church, I'm very clear with her. Like, I. I don't go to Mary's church. I'm not in her marriage. I'm not a part of it. But I mean, do I see Mary purporting she's something she's not? A hundred percent. Is Mary moody? Mary is self-proclaimed moody. Yes, but this is like a whole nother level. Like where Chris, I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, I mean, some of the things Whitney told me, it's a little unnerving. Lisa and I are now in over our heads with Mary. The, the allegations and rumors and accusations against Mary are so big that they could potentially 
be criminal. She could be in trouble. We don't know. But I just felt like I was in over my head and Lisa brought me here. Lisa brought Cameron into it by inviting him to her event and Cameron told Meredith. I would have never brought it up to Meredith that day, ever. So I'm gonna drag her down with me. <laughs> Honestly, that's the truth. It's if I'm, if I'm gonna go down for this, you're gonna be with me because I'm only in this position because you brought me here. So you and Jen finally sit down for lunch. You know, it felt a little icy in the beginning because I think she was upset that I didn't meet with her sooner. How are you? Um, I'm doing, I'm doing as, as good as I can be right now. It took about two weeks for Lisa to like answer the phone and agree to meet me for lunch, two weeks. So, you know, at first, I, in my mind, I kept making excuses for why she wasn't picking up because that was just the less hurtful path for me to, because I really thought Lisa was like there for me, like she was a true friend. So I brought it up with my attorney, I brought it up with coach. And you know, my attorney told me, he said, Jen, people will just, they get scared. They don't respond. They don't know how to respond. And I'm like, yeah, but she was supposed to be my friend. She. She doesn't know how to respond. Respond to me the same way you would have responded 24 hours prior. Like, I, I'm the same person. I was never judging Jen off of her legal case. That was completely a non-factor. I was still going through everything in my head like that had happened two weeks prior. I mean, I haven't really talked to you much since like my kid's party. I see him getting gifts from Whitney on social media. It was all a well, talk setup. Well, I don't really want to talk about- Well, you brought it up. Why? I'm still like, like, where am I with Jen? When she brought that up, I was like, what are you talking about? Girl, when we had that argument or whatever, not even an argument, it was a discussion because Lisa brought up some stuff that was very hurtful to me about what somebody that was in my circle. It was bothering me that like other, other people that are in our friend group are supporting him and sending him gifts. Her intention was to, for, to show me what a piece of shit Heather and Whitney are. And that's when I got upset at her. I'm like, why are you bringing this up right now? You, or, you know, Lisa, how hurt I was by that. Why are you bringing this up? It's not even like, we don't need to discuss it. After we left there, she called me because she knew she was in the wrong and she was trying to apologize. And I told her, I said, okay, I get it. I said, but I just, I'm very hurt by you bringing that up. My kids heard her yelling at me and not saying some nice things. She said some horrible things to me. <laughs> you, you're not my friend. My kids are in my car. My little Henry heard it. My Jack heard it. I'll get emotional if I talk about it because it was so hurtful. Henry was hugging me and saying, mommy, you're perfect. Don't listen to Jen. And it was hurtful. Like, I just hate talking about all of this, to be honest with you. Like, it's making me a little emotional because it's tragic all the way around. Honestly, I think Lisa's full of shit with like, she's just trying to bring up something to make it sound, because right now, Lisa, you're the piece of shit. We're arguing over some dumb shit. Girl, I have some real shit going on right now with me and my family. People will talk a lot and say, hey, I'm ride or die, or I'll always be there for you. And like, they're very convincing, and it sounds like that's, you believe them, like, you're, oh, they're gonna be my ride or die. And then you really don't know until you are in a situation like this, where it is ride or die to find out who's gonna show up. You know, I had a lot of compassion for her just watching her sob over the situation and all the emotions she was going through, like nothing else really mattered at that point. Did it matter that she yelled at me? Did it matter that she hurt my feelings? No, Jen's life is on the line. Um, her freedom's on the line. And honestly, like we left hugging. She gave John a huge hug. I'm glad I met with her. It was the right thing to do. And I care a lot about her. So to me, it was like, you know what? This is what friends do. But I felt like I was in a much better space when I met with her too. It was important that I waited. The luncheon gets so heated that you decide to take a minute and you leave the table. I really hope that nobody goes through no, this. No, listen, wait, wait, Jen, wait. I'll be right back. I'll be take right it, back. Yeah, take a breath. I'm no, not, I'll be right back. Just let her have a breath. Jen, you're okay, though. 
how I was really trying to like, you know, work hard to really get to a good place with everybody. I didn't want it to escalate to where it blew up. So I, we, you know, I was trying to identify my limits. And so I had texted coach and been like, can you please come and get me? Cause I can't take this much more. Jen, everybody was talking. Everybody was talking to you. It was big news. It was the big thing about dinner. It was everybody was talking about it. And again, this is like a couple weeks after the incident. We're looking for Jen Shaw. So it's all very raw and hurtful and, you know, real to me. And so that's when um, I needed to just, I needed to leave the, the situation. As a human being, I know this woman is obviously in a lot of pain right now. She's sitting in a situation that nobody ever wants to be in. And she was probably looking forward to a fun day with her friends to get out, get out of her own head, try to have some fun, try to enjoy herself, which is why to me, I was going to just kind of try to check out because I didn't want to, I was trying to be kind. And she was poked at. I can tell you about your outfit. You didn't go to jail. Jen, everybody was talking. Everybody it was, was talking. Big, to you. It okay. was big. You're completely oblivious to every, completely oblivious. Like there's not like really. And I don't know exactly what set her off or who poked the most or whatever. Because remember, I was not even at the table for a good part of it. I was standing and trying to calm Mary down. I was arguing with Lisa at one point. I don't know how many times I got up from that table, and it was a lot. Uh, so I don't know exactly what set her off to the point where she called Sharif to pick her up. But you know, for this. Somebody who's, you know, struggling and looking for a fun moment with their friends, being provoked to the point that they're crying for their husband to come and pick them up is me. And it didn't sit well with me. You guys no. all say you want to be her friend and this is what you just did to her? Yeah. Are you kidding uh -huh. me? She needs friends who can support her. I was probably a better friend for saying I can't be your friend. I do not want her in my presence. I don't want her in my store. I don't want her in my home. And I don't want her around my family. Then one who's pretending to and not fully being there, fully supporting her and, and you know, doing what she, she needs. I felt there was two sides to Meredith. One side was, I don't want Jen to be here. I dislike Jen. I don't want to have anything to do with her. And the flip side is, you guys are horrible to Jen. I was the only one supporting Jen. Wait, what? Sit on the pot and <laughs> or don't, or get off the pot. That's <laughs> when I see a different side of Meredith and I have to doubt who she is at that moment. From my perspective, she was so confusing. And I felt like she was talking out of both sides of her mouth. I felt like Meredith was defending Mary, who I felt like was interrogating Jen. And this is a true story. This is, this is feeling like a whole, from what we got, like, I mean, I'm just, I mean, I'm just, I'm just asking. This is a true story on my father. Like, you have no clue what's going on? And it was not nice. Mary lied about me. She talked about oh. me. She said that I was the next year. Oh, yeah, let's get I real. I did not say that, Mary Cosby. Did she say That's it? a lie. And then Meredith is chasing after her and coming back and saying, You're, none of you are being nice to Jen. You guys need to be kind to Jen when the only person not being nice to Jen was Mary. I mean, did that even make sense? Because this sounds crazy. It was just a lot, Chris. It was a lot. So Jenny, you decide to host a Vietnamese luncheon and invite all the ladies, including Jen, but not everyone is happy to see her. She was sharing stuff about communication and I think it's little things that you forget that like are probably up, innate Jen? and natural. I and believe then, uh, so. Yes. So for me, I wanted to get the ladies together. The last time we saw each other was at Veil and we haven't spoken since. And there's a lot of question that has not been answered. I had a podcast with her for an hour about what she does and oh, I still I don't get she, it. I, I get it. it. You think she's meeting up with another guy? I have no idea who she is. And Jen was not there to speak for herself. And so I wanted to throw this luncheon for the ladies to sit down and just, you know, talk about it. And then if you have question for your friend Jen, you need to ask her now that she's here, let not have someone speak for her, let her speak for herself. And if you support her, that's up to you. If you don't support her, that's up to you. But at least you can hear her side. We heard and seen from the media. I heard Stu were charged 
for laundering money and stealing people's money abroad. Let's now hear Jen's side. And then Meredith, she showed up and then gave me crap about it. Didn't we all have this conversation not to invite me if you invited her? I was like, it's, it's not about you. This is about us. Don't make it about you. When I first got the invite, I, um, it didn't even cross my mind that Jen was invited. So Very if you hard. want Very to invite hard. Jen, do not invite me. When Jen was walking up, I mean, I was surprised. Like, I didn't think she would be invited. I tried to call Meredith and talked to her and invited her to the, uh, the luncheon. She didn't answer. And so I text her, you know, I'm doing this. I would love for you to come. I feel like if you call me and you ask me who's going, I would be very honest. I didn't have a chance to talk to her, to explain to her who's going. And she never asked me, you know, she just texts back, she's going great. And going into my luncheon, you need to not be selfish. This is my event. I will invite whoever I want to. If you don't want to go, that's up to you. If you've seen someone at my event, you're more than welcome to leave. I don't have like handcuffs and force you to stay. So for me, it's like, it's not about you, Meredith. It's about everybody in this group. And I'm not just gonna like pick you out and say, I need to like watch out for Meredith's feelings. That's not me. So for me, it's I'm gonna invite everybody, but if you're gonna ask me, I'm gonna be honest. Jen is coming and if you're uncomfortable, I understand and respect that, but she never called me. As the conversations start and, and Jen starts talking about what had happened, you know, with her arrest, I'm in a place, you know, like I had said, I didn't want to be around her. I didn't feel that I was getting truthful information from her prior to this time. So I had no reason to believe I was going to get truthful information at this time. Nor did it really matter to me because I was at a state where I had said, you know, kind of written off the friendship. And I didn't know there was issue at the, you know, ice fishing, they were great. And that to me was, wait, what happened during, from ice fishing to Vail? And I have a misconnect on what happened to that relationship. I thought they're gonna start from ground zero and have a, a, a better relationship and that didn't happen. It was kind of just like, I just wanna tune this out, you know, it was like, uh, 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 uh. You know, I was trying to not even really pay attention, although that's hard to do, but I, I was trying to tune out. I was trying to disengage. I didn't want to get angry. I didn't want to get upset. And I knew that if I really paid attention, I would get pretty pissed. If you're uncomfortable, there, there's the gate. I'm not forcing you to stay, but if you're going to stay, be open-minded, listen, communicate, and try to understand. We're Team Salt Lake, so be Team Salt Lake. <laughs>